Welcome to the Indian Food Explain podcast by Cook Like an Auntie. You don't have to be an auntie to make delicious Indian food. Now here's your host, Gopi Vajrabelu. Let's begin today's journey in southern India. A family is eating a traditional breakfast in Karnataka. There's a yellow-colored rice on the plate with some roasted chana dal, peanuts, mustard seeds and curry leaves. The rice has a pleasantly sour flavor. That's lemon rice, a common breakfast dish in Karnataka. It's locally called chitrana in Canada. The characteristic yellow color doesn't come from the lemons in its English name. The yellow color is from the turmeric powder added to the tempered oil. When the oil is mixed with the rice, the yellow turmeric coats the rice. But the mildly sour flavor is of course from the lemon sprinkled on the rice. Lemon rice can have a wonderful combination of spicy, salty, and sour taste all in one bite, which makes it a very popular savory dish. Chitrana translates to mixed rice in Canada and can actually refer to many types of rice dishes. It can describe any type of rice flavored with a souring agent such as lime, mango, or tamarind. But it most commonly refers to the rice flavored with lemon juice that we are talking about today. Nimbehuli chitrana is the proper name to specify lemon rice in Canada. Lemon rice is popular in most of South India. It's a common dish in Karnataka as we already discussed, but people from the neighboring states such as Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, and Kerala also make lemon rice. The Tamil name for the dish is Yelamache Sadam. In Telugu, it's Nimake Puliora. Or in India's north, the Hindi speaking states call it Nimbu Chavel. As you can guess, each just translates to lemon rice. But the dish is so well associated with Karnataka that many other parts of India will know the dish by the Canada name Chitrana. You can also get by saying lemon rice in English. In addition to lemon juice and turmeric, The dish is commonly flavored with the tharka of mustard seeds, curry leaves, urad dal, chana dal, and peanuts. Although these ingredients can change depending on each family and what ingredients are available near their home. Scholars believe that citrus-related fruits such as lemons originated in South Asia and as such it makes sense that lemon rice has been a popular dish on the subcontinent for centuries. The question of lemon's origin actually stumped researchers for centuries. Scholars only came to some basic consensus in late 2023 after a paper was published in the journal Nature Genetics. The researchers published their findings of a genetic analysis for multiple types of citrus, which indicated that lemons originated in South Asia before spreading to other parts of Asia followed by the world. Even though we are used to seeing product of Mexico labels on our lemons purchased from the grocery store in North America, India is actually the largest producer of lemons and limes in the world. It produces 21 million tons, which is 17% of the world's supply. The states of Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, and Karnataka are some of those growing lemons in India. Apart from the peanuts commonly used in lemon rice recipes, the other ingredients I mentioned before have all been available in India for millennia. This makes lemon rice a somewhat rare modern example of what Indian food was before Europeans introduced tomatoes, potatoes, chilies, and other ingredients to the subcontinent from the New World. One of the earliest written mentions of chitrana is from a Sanskrit encyclopedia called the Manasalasa. The Manasalasa was composed by the Chalukya of Kalyani King Someshvara III, who ruled around the early 12th century CE. His kingdom includes modern-day Karnataka, Telangana, southern Maharashtra, and western Andhra Pradesh. In the section on food, the author included a recipe for chitrana, so the dish has been popular for a staggering 900 years. Interestingly, other recipes noted in the Manasalasa include modern-day favorites such as dosa, idli, vada, and pakoras. The Manasalasa is considered one of the most important historical artifacts from ancient India. It gives a sample of Indian cuisine and culture before European colonization. It also describes non-culinary topics such as political science, competitive sports, music, dancing, and health. Lemon rice is typically served cold because the heat will diminish the nutrients from the lemon juice and create a bitter flavor. It's best to wait for the rice to cool a bit before adding the lemon juice to the rice to prevent the lemon juice from heating up and becoming bitter. Lemon rice is not a type of fried rice, it's just a flavored rice. 
so the rice and oil are both cooled to near room temperature before they're mixed. And because it's eaten cold, lemon rice is a common breakfast dish, but it's also a convenient lunch option for Indians taking tiffins to work or school. You can eat lemon rice with papad, the famous Indian deep-fried cracker of sorts, raita, which is a creamy spiced yogurt, sambar, which is a popular lentil stew, or chutney. You can also eat it on its own as a snack or light meal. Lemon rice can be part of a South Indian thali meal, which is a multi-course meal of smaller portions. The lemon rice would usually be second or third course in the meal after plain rice, sambar, and vegetables, but before any sweets. It's sometimes included in traditional South Indian wedding lunches. There's a street cart called Chitrana Center in the famous culinary city of Mysore, Karnataka that serves a famous lemon rice. The cart also serves idli, chutney, sagu, and ghee rice. I'll post a link to a video of it in the show notes. The video shows a bit of the process for making a large amount of lemon rice. If you want an easy way to make lemon rice, the Indian food brand MTR sells a lemon rice powder mix that's available in North America, both online and in South Asian grocery stores. You take the powder from the packet, add it to oil, and then mix it on cooked rice. Although I think making lemon rice from scratch is pretty much just as simple as that process anyway, so let's talk about a homemade lemon rice recipe. Cooking the rice well is very important in lemon rice because its most basic description is flavored rice. Unlike biryani, which has meat and vegetables to cover imperfections in the rice texture, or curd rice, which has a liquidy yogurt to mask sticky overcooked rice, there are very few strong flavors or textures to hide poorly cooked rice within lemon rice. The grain should be separate after cooking and not be moist or sticky. Wash the rice well to remove the starch off the grains. This prevents sticky rice. You want to wash until the water runs clear. If you want a visual example, the lemon rice recipe on the Cook Like an Auntie YouTube channel shows how I wash rice. You can use any variety of non-sticky rice, although short grain rice will give you the best texture. Pony and Sona Masuri are common varieties used for chitrana, but if you only have long grain basmati or jasmine rice, it's okay to use it. When I cook short grain rice, I use a ratio of 1 to 1 uncooked rice to water, but that ratio should change based on your individual rice cooker. If your rice comes out sticky, use less water next time. If your rice comes out chewy or burnt, use more water next time. Once you find what works in your rice cooker, write down the type of rice you used and the ratio of water you used. Once the rice finishes cooking, you should fluff the rice with a fork. A fork will allow the individual rice grains to separate and release excess moisture between the grains. A spoon will not allow the rice to separate as well because you'll end up getting balls of rice on the spoon instead of grains going through the fork prongs. Having separate grains of rice is important when you coat the rice with the lemon and spice mixture later. The next step is to prepare the spice mixture. It goes without saying that each family has their own individual recipe for lemon rice. The particular recipe I will share does not include fenugreek, asafoetida, dried chilies, or cilantro as those ingredients can be relatively strong compared to the most mild flavors in lemon rice. Nevertheless, some recipes include those ingredients in their lemon rice spice mix, depending on what the individual auntie and her family prefer. If you do choose to use them, dry roast and powder the fenugreek beforehand and include the asafoetida or dried chilies while tempering the spices. Add the cilantro to the rice before pouring the lemon juice on it. Sesame oil is common for the spice tempering, but you can use any oil or ghee you prefer. I use peanut oil because this recipe includes peanuts and my family in India historically grew peanuts on their farms. As a result, a lot of my family recipes use peanut oil. Heat three tablespoons of your oil of choice in a pan over medium heat. You want to wait until you see the oil shimmer a little when you move the pan. After the oil heats, add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. Wait for them to pop. I prefer to cover the pan while they pop to keep my stove clean. Then add one tablespoon of chana dal. Wait for it to brown a little. Then add half a tablespoon of urad dal and wait for it to brown. Add four tablespoons of skinless peanuts and let them cook for a bit. Then add curry leaves and turn off the heat. After the oil cools a bit, add one tablespoon of turmeric powder to the oil and mix. You want the oil to be cool enough so the turmeric powder doesn't burn. Set it aside for a bit. 
This spice mix can be made ahead of time and saved in a spice container in the fridge. When the fluffed rice reaches near room temperature, we can start flavoring the rice. Juice one lemon over it. Also add salt to taste and mix everything well. You'll want to taste regularly and add more salt and lemon juice depending on your preferences. Once you get the sourness and saltiness you like, pour the spice mix on the rice. Mix until the rice is coated well. You'll see the rice turn yellow from the turmeric in the oil. Put the rice in the refrigerator for at least three hours so the dal and peanuts soften in the lemon juice. After the peanuts and chana dal are soft, you're ready to enjoy your lemon rice anytime. You generally should serve it cold or only warm it to room temperature. If you want to see a more detailed recipe, check out the Cook Like an Auntie YouTube channel or cooklikeanauntie.com slash lemon dash rice. You can also find all sources and references used to make this podcast episode on the website too. Before you go, please help shape the future of Cook Like an Auntie. Please let me know what topics you want for future episodes by filling out an easy two-minute survey. Click the link in the show notes to help. Until next time, happy eating. Thanks for listening to the Indian Food Explained podcast by Cook Like an Auntie. Please subscribe to this podcast and visit cooklikeanauntie.com to find recipes and videos related to this episode. You don't have to be an auntie to make delicious Indian food. Thanks for listening and see you next time.